meeting to order for um, July 17th, 2011, and Supervisor Bennett is stuck in traffic. And, I say that and all, be 2012. <laughs> oh, 2012. I'm sorry. Well, come I put 11. How about 2012? Uh, Supervisor Bennett is uh, stuck in traffic, and also uh, Supervisor Long is uh, in a NACO conference. And roll call. Supervisor Bennett. Supervisor Parks. Here. Supervisor Long. Supervisor Foy. Here. And Supervisor Zagarosa. Here. And then today we have, for the moment of inspiration, we have a young lady by the name of Melissa Baffa, Executive Director of Friends of the Channel Island State Park, and she's going to help us with uh, a moment of inspiration. She's uh, a member of the nonprofit organ Channel Islands State Parks nonprofit organization, and it's very appropriate that we have her here today because today we also have uh, a resolution that uh, that we're going to commend Parks and Recreation Month. So, Melissa, welcome. And after you finish, maybe you can help us with the pledge. Great. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And I do have um, packets for each of the supervisors. And Melissa was very instrumental in helping us uh, in saving McGrath Park also. So. Well, I want to thank you all, first of all, for having me here today and for your service to the community. And I also want to take the opportunity to thank you for um, the $50,000 that helped us to keep McGrath open. That was enormous. And I know that for some of you um, East County supervisors, maybe that was a little bit harder to you know, think about, but we do know that our parks have a huge impact on this entire county. So thank you very, very much. Thank you. Um, so uh, I am the executive director of Friends of Channel Coast State Parks. We're the nonprofit that partners with the uh, district that goes from McGrath in Oxnard all the way up through Gaviota uh, north of Santa Barbara. So all of those state parks and state beaches along the coast there. Um, in Ventura County, we have three parks. We've got McGrath, we've got Emma Wood, and we've got Buena Ventura. Between those three, we probably get about three quarters of a million visitors every year. And that's pretty significant when you think about the economic impact that that has. A recent study found that about $55 per day is spent by each camper in the surrounding communities. So that's pretty significant when we're bringing these people into our community, particularly people from some of the hot regions. You know, um, I live in Simi Valley, so, um, <laughs> so I know how hot it gets out there, and I like to come out to the beaches when it's 100 degrees. Um, so some of the things that are coming up for our group, we support educational and interpretive programs in the parks. So that's everything from junior ranger programs to um, campfire programs. Um, and at McGrath State Beach, one of the things that we are looking at now that has been saved is there's a feasibility study that's being done to investigate moving some of the campgrounds, some of the campsites away from the floodplain mm -hmm. so that first of all there could be access to the park year round and secondly we can restore that sensitive wetland habitat that's right there Thank at you. the mouth of the Santa Clara. Um, so our group would be a good partner in that project in terms of installing interpretive boardwalks and bird blinds and things that can help us to really enjoy that wetlands um, once it has you know, been restored. So that's in the pipeline, and I'm sure you'll be hearing more about that. At San Buenaventura State Beach, which is where I'm headquartered, one of our other major parks, um, things that we are working on are uh, proactive ranger patrols there to make sure that the park is safe. Um, also, um, cleaning up the park, cleaning up the, um, uh, the way that it looks, the way that it uh, functions, and um, bringing more events and programs and things to that park to help raise its visibility in the community. Things that we're talking about at that park at this point are a new junior lifeguards, event center, um, an interpretive playground, bocce courts, frisbee golf courts, things like that to give people more recreational opportunities at the parks. So, so Melissa, if, if we add the 300 at McGrath and 300 at San Buenaventura and the 150, 700 some thousand visits, that's tremendous, you know. And, uh, yeah. and Melissa has done an excellent job there with the, uh, with the parks, you know, and thank you so much for all your work and, and also to really save McGrath and, and our parks. We want to thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. I and can you help us with the pledge? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America 
and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank, Thank you, you again. Melissa. Okay, our next item is the, um, the minutes of uh, June 19th. What's the pleasure of the board? Okay, you got a first and a, and a second. Okay. Okay, and that's approved. Uh, item um, number six, agenda review. Michael. Yes, thank you, Chair Zaragoza. Just a couple of items. Uh, agenda page nine, item 34. Mm -hmm. Added tax collector to the presenting agency's name. Mm -hmm. uh, item 10 is revised page five of exhibit one. Could you do that one more? Yeah, item 10, revised page five of exhibit one. Mm -hmm. uh, item 25, there's a letter submitted from Nathan Boren requesting item be pulled from the consent agenda item and set for a time certain on a future board agenda. That's a request from... Right. And then finally, uh, time certain agenda item 35, there's been a PowerPoint presentation submitted. And that's it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and um, I would go ahead and request, uh, as I understand, it isn't time. It is not time certain to um, pull 25 and have it at our next board meeting instead. Just pull them. Okay. So I'll, I'll request that we don't have 25 at this agenda. Okay. But our next one, which would be the 20. The 20. What is it? 24. 24. Okay. We will do that. Okay. Supervisor. Okay. Okay. So we need a motion. So move to the agenda as revised. Okay, second, we got a second. Okay. One more. <clears throat> okay, and that's approved. And item number 7, 10, 230, you'll, uh, except. You'll need, to, you'll need to wait. We have four fifths votes on the consent agenda. We need four? Yeah. Oh, we need to wait on items. that one. Supervisor Bennett comes in? Yes. Okay. You'll remind me on that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, agenda consent items 10 to 30, except, and we uh, reschedule 25. What's the pleasure of the board? Um, well, even okay. item 16 in a four-fifths yeah. vote, so we I think we wait. have to hold the consent. Well, wait, wait on that also? Um, yes. The consent no. agenda um, until uh, after Supervisor Bennett arrives. So we'll wait for six and seven then. Right. Oh, did you just want to do hmm? Do you want to take those out, or do you just want to go to public comment? Well, why don't we pull those out then? Okay. And then, and then can we vote on that? I, I think I hear <laughs> Yeah, I would Why don't we just wait then? Yeah. Okay. Okay, then I have item number eight, public comments, and I have uh, one, two, three, four or five speakers, and uh, we'll give them three minutes. And the first speaker is Chuck uh, Bowman, followed by uh, Lita. Chuck Bahio. <clears throat> morning, uh, Chairman Zaragoza. Good morning. And uh, Supervisor Foy. And Ms. Parks. I'm here today to uh, thank the board and uh, especially Supervisor Bennett for your support of the Watershed Protection District and their efforts to secure grants mm -hmm. for SCR3, SCR1 on the Santa Clara River. Uh, that's a, a great step on our goal to secure those levees so that uh, the folks in those neighborhoods there in North Oxnard and uh, don't have to live under the cloud of right. huge flood insurance payments forever. So um, special thanks to Gerard Kapuzik and Norma Camacho. They worked very hard and their team on securing those grants. So uh, we're all celebrating uh, this particular <laughs> step in the process. So uh, thank you very much. And thank you, Chuck, for commenting too. And thank our staff you know, for the good work they've done and, and your, your team also. Thank right. you, sir. Thank you. It's thank always you. nice when people come in and say thank you. So. Thank you. We'll, we'll pass your thanks on to Supervisor. <laughs> okay. 
And remember, I had a conflict on that, so I couldn't help on that. So, but thank you anyway. Lita, B I E J O, followed yeah. followed by Steve Nash. <laughs> That's okay. Good morning, honorable supervisors. Good morning. The name is Lita Viejo, mother of eight children, two of which are foster, one from Nicaragua and one from the Philippines. Four, <clears throat> four are orphan relatives that I end up taking care of. And of course, two biological ch children, both of their are lawyers and graduate of Ivy League universities. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> what really prompted me to resume my, meet, my going to the county supervisor is to know more about what you guys are doing. I think I've been out for quite a while traveling. I was just in my 75th country. Do you know that there are 213 countries in the world? So I still have to perform a lot of overtime because that is one of my goals, is to set my foot for every country. So I still have to do, but sometimes call of my concern <clears throat> for the betterment of our country. I could not help it. That's the kind of person I am. Uh, election time is coming and I've been receiving, okay, please donate. I am want to retire Mr. Bennett and all this, but I really, the last time is that Susan Lacey was still here when I was <clears throat> uh, always present here. So that was a long time ago. So I have to know more about you people, what you are really doing, such that I can give my donation. After all, I worked so hard for my money. When I came to this country almost 50 years ago, I have only $50 and few thousand of pesos. That is the truth. On my third day, I was working. I started with fi as filing clerk. And my boss, when she found out that as I was a nuclear physics instructor in the Philippines, I think he got so embarrassed that he has to do something about me. But I have to prove myself. That's the kind of person I am. I don't have to tell you this is the kind of blah, 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 blah. Because not, you have to prove yourself. And I guess I have proven myself now. The fair, mere fact is I sent my two girls, and I believe with all my, I have my ranch, Mr. Foy. I'm not just, maybe I'm not as rich as you are, but they are all hard-earned money and with this muscle that I have. Now, <clears throat> my concern is this. One, <clears throat> I was renewing the conservatorship of my nephew who is mentally ill. When I heard people, these people, they're all speaking Spanish. And I, well, I've been fighting this for quite a while since I came to the Southern country. And I said, speak English. This lady said, look at me and said, you learn how to speak Spanish. And he said, Señora, hablo español y otra lenguaje, pero este es Estados America. We speak English. The Constitution was even written in English. What are we doing? So I'm calling you, my dear country, uh, county supervisors. Enough is enough. Let's help people who need help. I'm not against that. I'm very much in charitable organizations. So I like to help people. That is one of my passion. <laughs> but then, Mr. Sargosa, I will call your attention especially because your last name is Latino, mm -hmm. like me, viejo. Mm -hmm. But when we came to this country, we should adapt to the culture of this country. Mm -hmm. you, we should not be a burden, but we should see. And let us quote, let me remind you of what President Kennedy said. Ask not what the government can do for you, but ask what the government can, look at what you can do for the government. So there are so many ways of cutting the expenses. One is that, if they want, if they don't want to speak English, tell them to bring an interpreter. Let us not go down to them. We speak English in this country. Secondly, <clears throat> This is something that will, I'm, I'm not very sure yet, but I heard since I've been active, is that one county supervisor has been changing his furniture every year. That is not right. That is not right. That is not acceptable. I really don't care if you have a dilapidated chair there when I visit you, as long as you are doing your job. 
Really are not here to impress us with your furniture in the room. Please. The country is suffering. The country is, the country is in crisis because of bad policies, especially the present tenant in the White House. Secondly, is because of what 9-11 has done. They insulted us. Imagine using our own oh. plane Mrs. to cause so much damage in our country. So please, I know, I understand. So I'm asking you, you are here to elected officials to serve our country. Please do your duty. Thank you very much for the opportunity you have given me. Mr. Foy, I'm still going to visit you one of these days. You are my supervisor. Steve, Steve Nash, uh, followed by uh, April Duncan. Thank you, uh, Chairman Zaragoza, mm -hmm. supervisors and staff. I would like to uh, piggyback on the comments of Mr. Bauman. When a government entity and its staff do exemplary work, they should be acknowledged. So thank you to the Board of Supervisors and the Watershed Protection District for their commitment and hard work in acquiring grant money for the repair and rehabilitation of our county's levees. I would like to especially thank the staff of the WPD, Tom Legier, Norma Camacho, and grant writer extraordinaire Ger Gerard Kapusik, who uh, also spoke last Thursday at my neighborhood council's meeting and gave us this fantastic news. Imagine, with 2% of the state's population, we receive 20% of the available funds. This doesn't happen because we are more worthy than other counties. It happened because we have superior staff writing superior proposals. Once again, on behalf of the residents of Windsor North, thank you. Thank you, Steve. And Mr. Bennett's here now, so you got it. Thank you. I, 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 I understand Mr. Bauman spoke uh, also on this. It, it, not too often on do we have people coming down with compliments. They come down with things that we're doing wrong. And so it's very nice of both of you gentlemen to take the time to, <laughs> to come and do this. And it was remarkable uh, to get 20% of the money. Um, and a great jump start for us in terms of our projects there and the levy projects. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. April Duncan, followed by Tracy Miller. Good morning. My name is April Duncan. Excuse my appearance. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a resident of Ventura County, your district, Mr. Bennett, um, specifically. I am also um, an employee at Ventura County Animal Services. I want to make it very clear, I don't speak on behalf of that agency nor any of its employees this morning, but I um, was motivated to come. I am extremely concerned about this cloud of impending doom I feel over our agency. I love my agency. I love what I do. I have pulled animals off the streets all my life. I know that there are voices out there, and let me make it clear, I am the lowest of the low as far as rank there, okay? I clean, I feed, and I care for these animals. I also hold them for euthanasia. Conditions are deteriorating, and I know there are voices. Um, I believe you're a big supporter of this, um, the notion of a no-kill. And I'm sure that any um, member of the public you went up to and said, would you like a no-kill shelter? Of course they'd say yes. The fact is, it is nowhere near a possibility. We are not the problem. We are not the solution. We have people dropping off 12 and 13 dogs at a time, literally in two trash cans. Here you go. We say no to no animal. We welcome the most abused, neglected, abandoned animals, the most vulnerable members of this community. Rescue groups do none of this. They pick and choose what they take. I just left, I just came off graveyard. There are 11 contaminated kennels we cannot use now. We have no more room for sick animals. I cannot stand to see animals suffer. This is an incredibly stressful environment. So although the voices are loud, they are totally unexperienced in the shelter. And to house these animals, I can give them blankets and toys and do the best I can. It is a stressful environment. I would rather see my animals euthanized rather than to live there a month. Um, 
we do the best we can, but we cannot solve the problem. I think the major thing is, is if we could please do something to keep them from getting there, we cannot fix it there. It's too late. With the last link in the chain, something simple like the licensing laws. Nobody wants to enforce the laws that are on the books. If 80% of those dogs probably have homes. If they were abiding by the law, licensing their dogs, the dogs wouldn't even come through the door. Would be calling the owners from the dog truck saying, can we meet you at your house? Those animals would be home. So I guess the main point I want to make, we cannot fix it. We, it has deteriorated because of long holding periods beyond anything I've ever seen. We have dogs piled three high to a kennel, and the fighting is unbelievable. April. Thank Excuse you. Excuse me. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa. Could you please? Do you want additional information? I'd, I'd like to okay. talk. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I, April, the supervisor wants to ask you additional information. Yeah. No, I apologize. I don't no. mean to be inappropriate. Mm -hmm. I just love my yeah. agency and what... I, I want to emphasize a few things. You're not inappropriate at all. Okay. Um, you're doing exactly what you should be doing and what needs to be done. And that is all of the voices need to be heard on this. This is... When you make the statement that you know, you, we have to stop the flow coming to the door. Um, it's important for you to continue to make those statements. It's important for you to get that message out from your position uh, there uh, in animal services. So I would encourage you, don't, don't feel apologetic about doing this. Don't feel shy about doing this. That voice, your voice has to be part of the discussion or we won't solve the problem because some people think that all we have to do is change what happens at the shelter. And we know that's not the case. We know that you have to stop the, the numbers coming in. So that's the first thing I just wanted to say is thank you for saying this and don't stop saying it. You, you, have, you have a credibility that a lot of other people don't have because you're there. You're, you're, you're holding that dog. You, you see the trade-off uh, every day. You, you take in the, the 12 unwanted that, that others can say, well, we're not going to take those. You take them all, and then you have to deal with the contaminated cages, and you have to deal with them, you know, that, that are through no fault of yours. It's a, because an animal comes in that's contaminated. S the, the second thing... Um, that, that I just want to say is um, your passion for what you do is so obvious and it is important for people to see somebody like yourself and the other people that work at the shelter that you have the same passion as other people who are not at the shelter who, who, are, who are talking about no kill and talking about trying to make improvements. Our goal is to try to make improvements and, and this, is a, this is a way, identifying this is a way for us to start to get the message out to the community and go, if we're going to get there, all kinds of things have to happen. So uh, it is important for people to see not just hear your perspective, but also to see that your patient is equally strong and committed to these animals. Uh, you just work in a different spot in, in, in the environment. So continue to show that to the, to the public and continue to encourage other people from the shelter to do that. And thank you very much. For thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for your time. If I may also just comment. Hold on. Um, uh, I, I would like to just say don't be fearful because we see that there are changes that are needed and you have brought up some good suggestions also. But the intent of the changes are to make it better there. And I hope you're, you will continue to have your voice be heard. But everything from you know, spaying and neutering and, and really pushing that hard so we don't end up with these unwanted animals to begin with. But uh, I, I just want to tell you that the whole basis of the changes you're seeing is to make it better. Michael, it's Michael, backfiring is what I'm saying. Hold on, Michael. Michael like I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I apologize. Uh, I was just going to echo. Just say thank you for your comments this morning, April. Thank you for your time. It. Thank you for coming. Thank you, thank you so much. When you say it's backfiring, I'm sorry. I don't want to take up a lot of your time. Uh, it it is backfiring so badly. That's why I'm here today. And it's backfiring. Because, yeah, the irony of this whole thing is what's killing me. The animal rights groups, or I don't know who, who has the loud voices. It's a world of ignorance. I, I apologize. I can't put it any other way. We, I think management has a gun to their head. I don't know. Donna Gillespie just, is the only glue holding be, be us specific. together right what, now. What is back? What I'm specific is they are terrified to euthanize an animal now. We have pit bulls there 
one, two, three months, supported by taxpayers. They come down with Bordetella, they're now put on antibiotics. These dogs, if you want to come to the shelter and take home a pit bull or chihuahua, that's mostly what we have. We cannot force people to take these animals, yet we hold them and hold them and hold them. They get sick. We hold them. We hold them. The fact is these long holding periods, not being able to euthanize animals, um, really backfires because now we have disease outbreaks going through the roof. We, we cannot do our job. And I'm not saying that euthanasia is our job, but it is a really sad reality. And for us to try to cut those numbers way back this quickly without any support from the community, I mean, the animals are still pouring in, and yet our hands are tied, I, I believe. I Thank mean, um, and it okay. is... And staff, staff is taking notes of that. Yeah, yeah I'm thank sorry. You. No, it's, thank it's you for the sharing. Animals are suffering. That's thank what I'm here to point the out. Staff is listening to, to your. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you. Okay, we have uh, Tracy Miller followed by Julie Pena. Mm -hmm. Good morning. My name is Good Tracy morning. Miller, and I'm here on behalf of Many Mansions to thank the Board of Supervisors for its support and to thank each supervisor for your service. As you know, Many Mansions has come before you several times uh, requesting Mental Health Services Act um, housing program financing. And although many people have worked on these projects, including B uh, Ventura County Behavioral Health staff, some of whom are in the audience today who I saw, I get the honor of coming here today and giving you a little update on what we've done with this funding so far. So the first project we came to you with was the La Rajada Apartments in Simi Valley. If you remember, it was an eight-unit acquisition rehabilitation project for homeless adults with a mental disability. I just want to let you know that project's been running for several years now very smoothly. Uh, we're serving eight uh, tenants at a time, eight clients, and everything's going really well. The second project we came to you with was the Hillcrest Project, which is a 60-unit new construction project in the city of Thousand Oaks. Uh, and 25% of those units, or 15 units, will be MHSA units. Uh, we're under construction and we're anticipating the construction will be completed in March of 2013, after which we're going to start leasing up. And the most recent project we came to you with uh, was the D Street Apartments, which is an acquisition rehabilitation of an existing uh, apartment building in the city of Oxnard. If you recall, this was going to be a project for homeless youth, um, young adults between the ages of 18 and 24, who were either homeless or become, about to become homeless and had a mental disability. I just want to let you know we finished a second phase of rehab on the property. It looks fantastic, and we're fully leased. We've already been serving homeless youth for several months now, and everything's going really well. So again, I'm just here to say thank you so much for your support and to let you know what you are able to do in the community through uh, partnering with many mansions. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Tracy. Can I just say thank you and your organization. Uh, mm -hmm. Many Mansions has provided so much affordable housing. You're the leader in, in Ventura County, and uh, it's nice to see you branching out to other cities also, and particularly also taking in uh, homes for people with mental illness. I think that's, that's really important. And you're doing also for people with physical disabilities and, and helping them transition uh, into their own housing. So I just... Uh, we're, you are one of the success stories of our county, so thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you. It's a community effort. We really can't do it without all of our supporters. So. Let me also so say pleasure. that you know, we appreciate you coming and giving us this update because oh, you know, we commit taxpayer dollars and hope that people are going to do the right thing with it because it's you know, precious dollars people have earned. To that. And, it, and it's, we appreciate you willing to come and tell us, and the success you've had has been tremendous. So thanks again for doing that, updating thanks. everybody. Thank, thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Julie? Julie Pena. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Chairman Saragosa mm -hmm. and supervisors and staff. Um, I'm here on behalf of the um, Oxnard Interneighborhood uh, Councils. And I want to, on behalf of the neighborhoods that we represent, we want to thank you for the efforts that the uh, county has made to acquire the funding, uh, the grants, for the levies that affect so many of our neighborhoods. I understand that there were like 10 out of 11 grants that were approved, and supposedly this is a phenomenal feat that was accomplished, and um, you deserve credit for that. We thank you very much. And, and thank you again. We thank Jeff Pratt and his uh, staff, you know, and yes, I think, uh, what was it, about five, $6 million we got for the... Yeah, I, I don't know the individuals, but I know that yeah. it's, it's the talk around, uh, you know, uh, my circles, and mm -hmm. we definitely thank you because there's so many of the Oxnard neighborhoods that are affected. Thank you so much. Okay, that's the last uh, 
public speaker that I have. Thank you for um, taking the time to, to thank you for taking the time to come down and, mm -hmm. and speak positively. Also, yeah, appreciate it. Right. Um, well, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, can you? Um, Jeff, Jeff I, I just had a question in regards to the levy issue. I mean, this was tremendous to get the money. All that's great. We repair levies, build levies, and do that. What's what's in the future? We've seen the problem with as things come up, having to repair. So, what are we going to be able to do? Going, where's the money come to keep these levies up and to going forward? What's what's the situation? We'll be in that same situation again, having to find money. <laughs> Good morning, Chair Zaragoza, board members. Uh, for the record, uh, Jeff Pratt with the Public Works Department. Um, that is a complicated question. Um, the, uh, where does the money come from? Well, we get a share of the 1% of tax uh, increment that goes to special districts. And, um, uh, and so that is going to be used. Uh, it, my prediction is that over time that more and more of that is just going to be used to maintain the stuff that we have, the levies and everything else. Um, as far as new levies, there's a lot of new thinking in, in the world of floodplain management that has to do with non-structural approaches, uh, keeping people out of the floodplains in the first place. I don't know where the public policy is going to land on that. Um, the, the tension has been in the past that um, uh, you, a, a takings issue, trying to restrict development in the floodplain. Uh, it's a takings for those people who own floodplain land. But there, there seems to be some loosening of that. And a lot more talk about non-structural approaches and, and compatible uses inside the floodplain. So perhaps we'll see less uh, new levy construction and more non-structural stuff. But um, just in general with the Watershed Protection District, uh, there's going to come a time where there's no more new... if revenues remain as they are, and there's no, on the foreseeable horizon, there's no change to that. Um, we're just going to turn into a maintenance shop, essentially. We'll be taking care of those things we have, which is a very high priority because people rely on that stuff. It's one of our highest priorities in the public safety. And we won't be building new stuff unless there's a, a special sort of funding that comes along through grants or bonds or something. Um, but that's sort of, I, I, did I get your question? Yeah, no, I guess that's where I'm at. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is tremendous we're getting this. It's just the future looks dim because there's no way to keep up or just maintain what we got. And if with new problems come up, it's going to be more difficult. But it's a good place we're at right now. But it's going to be, I, I think you're saying it's going to get harder and harder in the future. We've learned, I mean, uh, as, a, as just generally as a society, we've learned a lot more about uh, flood, and so there's a lot more avoidance, just stay the heck out of the floodplain kind of thinking that goes on by land use authorities and others. So um, I, I don't sense we're going to have the same sort of uh, pressure in the floodplains that we've had in the past uh, when it was thought that there was just a structural solution for everything. So uh, that's my best right. guess. And Jeff, you know, we get a lot of accommodations from, uh, from our people in Oxnard and Thanks again to your staff and you. And we came in, what, third out of ten? A third out of ten. And, and it, it's phenomenal in the sense that, um, you know, it's years of building relationships in Sacramento and delivering on things that we uh, have said we were going to deliver on, building relationships with DWR, um, the regional, the state board, regional boards, the people who, who provide the grants, and delivering the projects that are, that are expected outcomes. Um, the, uh, it, there was a lot of good work by staff um, mm -hmm. in writing it. When we sat down, when that first came up, it was $50 million statewide. We thought it was going to be a spit in the ocean. Mm -hmm. We had a chance at maybe 500 grand or something. So uh, um, we all sat around and said, how much money and time should we spend on this? And um, I don't know, maybe staff saw it better than I did. They spent <laughs> the right amount of time, <laughs> apparently. And uh, yeah, we came up third in that. So it, 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 was, a, it was a great feeling. And, and I, there's almost too many staff to name, but Watershed Protection did a, a great job. And, and thanks to the people of Oxford, the different neighborhoods, you know, South Bank and the Flower Streets and River Ridge and so forth. And Chuck, you know, and, and those folks have been really instrumental in helping us out, too. So. That's right. Yeah, they've been great, and thanks for the support this morning. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I think it just goes to show that a lot of times the public doesn't see that the people here are willing to fight. They can't always be successful, That's right. but they are the ones, you know, like to say, is it really worth the fight? Sometimes they're willing to put this fight in, and then people benefit. It's not that we can get it all the time, and other places win sometimes. Yeah. But I do appreciate the idea that people are willing to, in the background, fight and hope for the victory, and they, we don't always congratulate them for the fight they put in when they don't win, but here we get that opportunity. So thanks for coming and saying thanks to the great people that worked and, hard and, to make this happen. And Angie, you thank the INCF too, you know, for INCF had been very instrumental in helping us out too. Supervisor I, Bennett? I, yeah, I'd just like to, to address 
the combination of Jeff and, and, and the residents here, it, it is a remarkable accomplishment. And I think back to, as you talked about building relationships, um, Watershed Protection District had to, had to you know, we, we had to spend time in the community um, because, you know, at first there's just a, we're going to get these high flood insurance bills and people are unhappy. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, when you're the bearer of bad news, you know, they're changing the flood zone. Um, it's, it's not normal that you suddenly turn that into anything positive. But the combination of uh, the way Watershed Protection District was able to roll things out and the, 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 the judgment and the prudence of the residents, I think the residents were really smart. They didn't just, you know, they could have really just exploded and dumped all over FEMA, um, dumped all over the regulators, and we may have not had the positive kind of environment. But I think the residents calculated, hey, if we can get this grants, we're willing to do some things to help ourselves. It might be better for us to even look at us paying something rather than to get the levy fixed rather than um, permanently paying flood insurance. So that was a that was a very remarkable. That's right. um, combination of things, having the residents uh, be uh, end up being real partners with us in dealing with those agencies so that those agencies came away, I think, with a good positive feeling and saying, hey, this is a, this is a worthwhile area to try to invest its money. So uh, my compliments to Watershed, and if you'll take my compliments back to, to everybody in the neighborhood that, that, that helped create that, that real rational sort of approach uh, that allowed us to I think be more successful out there. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. You got a gold start today, right? Chair, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, sure, I just I'm point out that on, he Mike. said he's their number three, but the other two were much bigger counties. That's right. That's so you know, just that's, to point that's that out. Point so too. From a disproportionate standpoint, this was almost number one. And, Orange uh, County and uh, I can't remember what the other L.A. I think. Right. So great, so, great job. Orange County and Alameda. Also. Alameda County. All righty, we'll just go back to item uh, six on the uh, the gender review. We need a, a vote on that. Uh, what were the changes in, in six? Seven. Seven. We had uh, uh, 25. We are going to reduce uh, 25, and we needed a. What was? Go ahead and read. <coughs> Mr. Chair, um, you postponed the consent agenda item, I believe, in its entirety, so now you could. We can go ahead and vote on, on to, meet, to meet the fourth list requirements. So it would be a move uh, the consent agenda minus, minus item 25. 25, 25 which yeah. we are continuing to our next meeting. Okay. And that, we need Mr. Chair, just for the record and the people that are in the audience. And also, let me, let me share that with you, too, that we have a second, but I also have a couple of speakers on item 25. And uh, the first one is Nathan Bourne. Followed by Julie Bolan. What if we move them to public comments? Is that, since we don't have a 25 after this vote. So, so okay, so we're okay with that. Yeah. Okay, then then we'll go ahead and. So, so 25 is going to be rescheduled. So, for the members of the public, item 25 will be continued to July the 24th at 11 a.m. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and we got a first and a second on this. Let's go ahead and vote. Okay, now we go to item number nine, uh, board comments, uh, Supervisor Foy. Thank you, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, again, it was good to hear the people come in and compliment the good work of the watershed. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple things, I'd like to uh, commend Ed Heideck. He's the Assistant General Manager of the Rancho Simi Park District. He was recently named Outstanding Professional by the California Association of Park and Recs District. And I just wanted to say, because you know, he works with the Simi Valley and Oak Park, uh, just a great job by Ed. Also, um, I want to adjourn a memory of the people on this list, but there's just one person on here that uh, I'd like to make a couple of comments on, and that's uh, Jim Waters. Jim, uh, as some of you might know, he was on the water district for Simi Valley, a third generation farmer, long term uh, resident out there in the Fort Park area. Um, his family does an awful lot. Uh, he done an awful lot. One of, the, one of the most generous guys you'd ever know. It's just died very young. Um, just are hard to see that. But, you know, it's interesting. He spent years on the water district, and now his son has taken his place on the water district, too. So generational. So anyway, my comments for the day. Thanks. Thank you. Supervisor Parks. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I would like to go ahead and ask that we close in honor of the people on this list 
And I'd like to um, highlight one very special lady, Sandy Tischler. And uh, Sandy was killed in, the air, in a plane accident in Arizona. And uh, she was a teacher at Santa Rosa Magnet School. But also she was a wonderful um, committee chair in the Boy Scout Troop 718. And her sons um, are uh, all Eagle Scouts. She just was just such a special woman, cared so very deeply um, for the children and watched these young men, uh, young boys turn into young men of great character. She really does leave a, a, a wonderful legacy of the young people that she helped and, and brought great character to. And I know her family and um, all those that she touched uh, will very deeply miss her, as I do, and uh, all, of the, all the families of the, the young people, too. So ask that we close in honor of um, Sandy and the people on that list. Um, in addition, I would also like to um, mention a, a couple of places. Uh, we, uh, at the last board meeting, I was talking about a, um, a book that was put together on Oak Park, so I just want to uh, share that with you. It's just it's wonderful that they could uh, put together a lot of the photos. Mm -hmm. It's not that old of a community, but it has a tremendous history, so I'll just pass that down so you could take a look at it. There was also um, uh, a study that was done by the National Park Service regarding wildlife crossings on the Highway 23. Uh, Highway 23 is one of the uh, most uh, noted, noted for its animal kill in the entire county of Ventura. And so uh, Caltrans, in conjunction with the National Park Service, um, did a, uh, a lot of efforts in putting chain link fences and, and putting them deep into the ground so the animals couldn't bury into them and funneling, um, as it were, the animals into under crossings under the freeway. And as a result, they saw an 85% uh, reduction in, like, for example, or 88% reduction in the numbers of coyote roadkill going on during that period of time. But it has led to efforts that they can then um, translate to other areas uh, throughout the Caltrans district. So kudos for, for doing the study, and it's wonderful to see the successful results of that, too. Um, and then also I was able to attend a, a meeting uh, at the Southern California Association of Governments. We had those regional housing needs associate, uh, numbers, and they were uh, um, the RENA numbers, and we were able to get another 100 units deducted from the, the county share. So that, that's going to be helpful. And also was able to attend a meeting at Caltrans where we're trying to encourage their efforts to expedite the left turn lane on 118 at Somas Road. And uh, it is um, like pulling teeth. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see uh, how that goes. And then I also joined my fellow supervisors up at the dais at the uh, Share of Special Services open house. And that was quite an education, and again, it was nice to see where our funding is going and uh, the uh, great collaboration, for example, with the federal government where we're getting a lot of free equipment that we can then use mm -hmm. throughout Ventura County, so that was nice to see, and that concludes my comments. Supervisor Bennett. <laughs> Thank you very much, Supervisor Zaragoza. I'd like to ask the board to adjourn in memory of uh, William Campbell III. Uh, he was a former CEO of uh, Ventura County Community Action and also of Martin Ware, a World War II veteran, served in the U.S. Navy. He's the father-in-law of Ventura City Council member Christy Ware, and also asked uh, that the board adjourn in memory of the other people on this list. Um, the, um, the, the big thing I'd like to call to your attention today is um, with um, lots of new energy being thrown at the animal shelter uh, efforts um, that we have out there, um, the um, animal shelter is putting out an email to uh, the county family, just like we've had during the holiday seasons. We've said uh, we need to have socks uh, brought in for homeless people, et cetera. Um, the animal shelter uh, is, has a shortage of dry food, mm -hmm. and we're trying to, to get the word out that uh, we're having a dry food um, uh, 
pantry drive, uh, so to speak. Uh, and I have flyers that I'll pass out to you. Uh, so you could put them up in your office and talk to people. But um, we uh, need dry food at the animal shelter. Um, the, uh, you can bring in bags of dry food or cat food um, to, uh, the, to the animal shelter at 600 Aviation Drive in Camarillo. You could take it to the GSA loading dock uh, here. Um, you could take it to the Simi Valley holding facility. Um, and you could bring it um, to our office if you're here in the administration uh, uh, room and uh, the uh, uh, sitting on the um, animal reg um, committee, um, I thought it was appropriate that I let you know that Animal Services is sending at, that email out and hope that our county employees will be looking for that. And I'll pass one of these. To this guy. Great, mm -hmm. and I'll pass uh, these down this direction here. All right. Um, in addition to that, um, Supervisor Parks talked about the. Um, Sheriff Services uh, uh, area. There have been a number of uh, things. Uh, Gills Onions and Flow Batteries, largest flow battery in the country, was uh, unveiled at Gills Onions. Um, and um, the Duda uh, Farm Solar Panel was a great uh, event to be able to attend. Um, the uh, Ventura Hillside Conservancies uh, continue to show their property. And I want to call the attention of any county staff that. Um, July 18th, coming up here, um, there will be a river, the Ventura River Parkway plan meeting will be rolled out um, here at 4 o'clock here in this boardroom so that agencies can become aware of this effort in the city of Ventura uh, for the Ventura River Parkway uh, project. Um, there was uh, the Carl Annual Pooch Parade uh, in the San Buena Ventura State Park that I was able to <laughs> attend. That's just a great uh, positive uh, event um, and was a, a pleasure to see and, 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 and see see people with that great energy for, for our animals. And finally, I um, want to remind everybody that this weekend is stand down, um, the, the stand down weekend for the veterans um, in terms of uh, trying to get more of those veterans off the streets, out of homelessness, and, uh, and taken care of. There's more on the list, but I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Supervisor. I'd also like to adjourn in uh, memory of the folks on this list. and. Um, this uh, last Sunday, you know, I attended the Relay for Life event over at Oxnard High School for the cancer survivors, which was really well attended. The Oxnard Kiwanis uh, made some free pancakes for the individuals who were there, and that was great. Also attended the annual Ed Hunt Re Rehab Point uh, picnic over at the Oxnard State Park in Oxnard, and it was attended by numerous individuals. It was really well attended. Also attended a uh, retirement for Navy Captain uh, Rob Nieves after 41 years and a very, very touching ceremony at, there at the CBC Museum. The way, you know, they release those folks and, and when they say you're no longer on duty, you know, it's just really, really great. And I also attended a uh, meeting at the Oxnard Performing, Performing Arts Center where we had uh, young kids from Oxnard, Simi Valley, and Moore Park they, that won the Las Vegas uh, dance competition and they I presented them with accommodation, and we had, uh, I think the auditorium holds about 1,800 people, and there must have been 1,000 folks, you know, there from, from throughout the county. And also, I attended the Santa Clara Chapel Festival over in, on uh, Rose and, uh, and uh, 101, raising money for the chapel. They, they did very, very well. And also, again, you know, as the supervisor mentioned, we attended the Sheriff's new uh, Headquarters there in Camarillo is beautiful. You know, just the, the things that they do there, and I got to commend uh, Sheriff Dean for for the good work that he that he's done there. And I'd also like to share with you that uh, on Monday, next Monday, the 23rd, we're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony over at Wright Road. Wright Road is off of Struby and Cortez. This is a road that's been unpaved. I don't think it's ever been paved, and we're going to pave this road. You know, and uh, it's going to be uh, quite a few people that. Uh, that are volunteering about $400,000 of material and labor and so forth. So I'm going to bring that before the board next week. So on Monday at 9.30 at, uh, over on uh, Struby and Cortez at about 9.30 in the morning. And that's all I have. And McGrath, and McGrath well, we did, oh, I'm really, McGrath, what can I forget McGrath? That was such a great, you know, we had the, the uh, 
ribbon ceremony. We opened up McGrath, and uh, we had a tremendous amount of people there uh, celebrating the reopening of McGrath. And, and it was mentioned earlier by uh, Melissa. I want to thank the Board of Supervisors for their contribution to keep that uh, park open. And when you have that many individuals, you know, the I'm looking at two sides. I'm looking at the opportunity for the families to enjoy and the children and also the economic benefit that was derived from that. It's just tremendous. And, and I want to thank uh, Supervisor Bennett was there with me on that particular ribbon cutting. And we had um, uh, Monty, you know, give us a Shumai ceremony uh, event. It was great. So thank you for reminding me of that. How can I forget that? <laughs> Let me just say also what you talk about. That's great. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think the lady was uh, here in regards to Melissa. East County uh, supervisors, as we all are county supervisors, and I, I do appreciate it. I mean, the quality things that we, we do, I mean, those are important things to do. So. Absolutely. It's good. The other thing I was interested, everybody mentioned the sheriff. Uh, also, the idea with the sheriff's piece, uh, his new location was that puts our employees in a very high quality mm -hmm. location, really does. But at the same time, he's saving an awful lot of money. Oh, yeah. I mean, so it's, 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 it's an advantage to all the taxpayers in one sense. And, Plus, they come. Their efficiencies of everybody being together was a was a real, real positive thing. On top of trying to control his budget, was saving some money at the same time. So it was it was really good to see that. And it just reminded me of something. I'm not sure if I mentioned it last time, but I had the opportunity to uh, visit uh, Renee's uh, forensic uh, laboratory here, and uh, the, and they do fantastic work too with the DNA and and all the things that they do. Uh, it reminds me of CSI. You know, when you go out yeah. and look at that. But anyway. Thank you for that. And um, our next item that we have, we have a 9.30. We're not there yet, but uh, we have a uh, regular item 43, agenda item 43. And this is a recommendation by Supervisor mm -hmm. Parks. Yeah, I would move uh, approval of this item. Uh, this is, we have been having to, uh, every uh, few years, re-up that Oak Park MAC can, can exist, mm -hmm. whereas all the other MACs just go on until we decide to do something. So this changes the wording so it can continue to exist until we choose to do an action. But I don't imagine that action will ever occur because it's such a great organization. <laughs> you have some very good MACs in you. <laughs> yeah, we, I have some great MACs. Okay, you've got a first and a second on that. Um, yeah. It's a nice form of government, I think. Yeah, absolutely. It's a okay, and that's approved. And then we have a correspondence item 45 through, um, let's see, what is it? 49. What's the pleasure of the board on that? Okay, got a first and second. Uh, and those are approved. Oh, well, yes. And we have a 9.30, so we have about four minutes for the 9.30 item. A little five-minute break.
We're going to call the meeting back to order, and um, we're on item uh, 31, and um, Mr. Supervisor Foy. Thank you. Uh, this is a special opportunity. Mike, will you come on down? We have a special opportunity to honor someone that we all know and uh, appreciate all, everything he's done, and that's uh, Mike Siddell. Mike is, uh, as we know, a city manager of Simi Valley for a lot of years, but Mike goes way back. Mike started with Simi way back in 1972 as an intern, so Mike's had a lot of, a lot of time with Simi. And, uh, but what I think is special about Mike, it's just not Simi Valley, it's just that Mike has really been an influence in this county, and I know he's, as was said at his uh, retirement party over at the Reagan Library, uh, Mike has been a major influence in a lot of people's lives and a lot of cities, and a lot, lot of what's gone on in this county. I know Supervisor uh, Parks and... Uh, Mr. Powers and a lot of people from the county had the opportunity to, to hear some of the great things that were said about him. We uh, gave him a, our resolution then. We won't do that again today. But just, you know, Mike is, is given a lot. He's given a lot, and he continues to give. As a matter of fact, I was talking to him yesterday, and he's, you know, he's retired, but where was he? He was in the city manager's office trying to help through some other issues at, at Simi Valley and part of the county stuff. So it's, it's one of those things. I'd, I have a feeling we're not going to say goodbye to Mike, we're just saying he's not in that official position anymore, but he's still going to be around doing the work of what's needed in the city of Simi Valley, but mostly what's needed in the work of this county, which I know he loves and has been here for so long. Um, I don't want to drag on a lot because uh, a lot was said before, but I just wanted to have him the opportunity. I know Supervisor Long was disappointed that she wasn't here. She wanted to say that she appreciates all that you've done for this county and your friendship and everything that you've you've had the opportunity to um, develop over all the years. Um, and so, Mike, uh, I would let you make a few comments because uh, I know you want to. You don't like to be the center of attention. <laughs> I know you hated that the other night, so go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, as you know, I I'm, I'm feel awkward sitting in the, in the limelight in these things. I prefer to work kind of behind the scenes to try and bring people together, find that common ground. Uh, but one of the things that gives me the chance here in a rebuttal format, I guess, is to, uh, <laughs> to really thank the board for, for what you all do and what you've done in this county. I remember back in about 1973, 74 time frame, maybe even earlier than that, where the board adopted your guidelines for orderly development. And what those did was set the future for this county in terms of a working relationship between local agencies together towards the development of Ventura County. That had a cost to this county, and I recognize that. And I recognized it then because that urban development that would incorporate it would happen in incorporated cities would create a benefit to those cities in terms of their economic development in terms of where the sales tax dollars went but at the same time it was the right thing to do and your county board recognized that and you continue to do that that doesn't mean that that even Simi Valley and the county don't always agree but when we disagree it's on a professional basis it's a way we work things out we find that common ground and your board has been leaders in that Mike Powers has taken that to the next level and we really appreciate that I've always appreciated that on behalf of our city in the way that we've been able to work with the county uh, on issues we work with the auditor controller, with the, the, uh, the county council's office, with the sheriff, uh, with the district attorney. We've always found that area where we can work together because there's been that desire that we're looking out for our common citizens. We're all looking out for that common good to find out where are those areas that we can do better, that there's some things that benefit all of us. It isn't just for our side or your side. It's a matter of where is that common area. And we can go issue after issue from the annexation of the uh, the Reagan Library area. We can go back to the, the various issues we've had in annexations to the city, uh, to various fiscal issues we've had, to the agreement we did with waste management. We sat down together, we worked those things out, and they were to the benefits of the residents of this county. We're now working on the issue for the courthouse to try and maintain that and the relationship with the courts. Those are all important things for the residents of this community, and your board has always looked out ahead to find out what those are and been willing to reach out a hand, extend a hand to work with us to try and find those. So on behalf of our city and myself, I greatly appreciate that. Any success our city's had with the county is because of your board, your boards in the past, reaching out to work with us and, and the way that you continue to do that uh, and that the county has continued to do that. So I appreciate that. Uh, and that's what's made any success I've had possible is because of those kinds of relationships. So my rebuttal is appreciation to you for all the jobs you do. Thanks very much. And Mike, too, you know, I uh, thank you for your good work and your excellent work. And you're a role model for city managers. And uh, it was a, I didn't have the opportunity to go to your retirement, but... I think uh, the star did an excellent job on, on all the work uh, that you've done and how you're going to continue to help the city of Simi Valley. And I commend you for 
for being that excellent role model for, for city managers to follow. Thank you. Thank yeah, you so much. If I can, too, also, um, having worked with you since the early 90s, um, yeah. just to I really realize you do set the bar, and you did set the bar uh, for city managers throughout the county. I've mm -hmm. always been so impressed with the work that you've done, mm -hmm. and a lot of it is the relationships. And I think uh, most notable is your ability to not get political when you're dealing with politicians. and and not taking sides, but looking uh, very objectively at things. You have a lot of intelligence that you bring to the to the table also, and a lot of patience. And, and just being at your um, retirement and hearing all the good things you've done, but you really realize how your ear gets bent. And over all the years that you've done, how many times you've had to um, listen to uh, the public and, and hear them and being able to see what you can do to assist them. And, and, and the work that you've done in uh, changing laws, you know, and making new laws and legislation, both with your relationships in Sacramento and, and in um, Washington, D.C. So that, that is quite of a legacy also. And then your work, as you mentioned, the Reagan Library, and then also with waste management. And, I know uh, it was great to see for your city getting the library annexed into the city of Simi Valley, but also that we have that shared concern of making sure that, I guess it's presidential vineyards, that, that area there, remain in the open space. It was nice to see Cornerstone purchase that open space, because I know that's something that you really take to heart. You want to see uh, that land remain um, open, so we appreciate that. And just your uh, total can-do attitude. You know, you, you, you see things that a lot of people will say that you can't change that, and you did, <laughs> and, and to the betterment. So just thank you so much for what you've done, and I guess most especially for, for setting that bar for other city managers. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mike, I had a chance to come out, and so I uh, don't want to repeat the things I said to you personally, uh, uh, but I'll end up repeating some of them just, just real quickly, but, I, but I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, you, you, you bring a, a, a true professionalism to the job, and that is, uh, I think, most evident when you try to interact with all the different players that are out there. Uh, very rarely in this county do I find somebody that everybody trusts to say, okay, I, I, I trust that he'll hear me, I'll trust that uh, I can work something out with him and, and, and make it go. I trust that he's not here with just one agenda, but he's here. The only agenda is, you know, how can we find that common ground like you talked about in terms of making it work. I saw it over and over again. Um, that's re remarkable. It's, it's hard to replace. It is part of the culture of Ventura County, and you're a, a big part of, uh, of, of that culture developing in Ventura County, and it's probably m most important that it was coming from you almost the furthest away from the seat of, of county government to sort of tie. I mean, the East End could very easily, you know, fracture off and view themselves as sort of L.A., uh, 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 you know, in a, in a sense. And so I, I just, it's, it's been remarkable. Everybody has said it over and over again. I just want you to know from my perspective, I really have appreciated it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Michael. I'll be quick. But uh, I do have a PowerPoint I want to go over. <laughs> yeah, I am squirming, as you know. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's right. Back and forth. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words. So much has been said, the consummate professional. I think the star headline got it right when they said the gold standard. Mm -hmm. I think that, that really says it all. Um, I had the benefit of hearing from Mike's colleagues as well at, at, at one of our city managers meeting at the, at the last one. And, and a couple things struck me is uh, uh, the trust that was said is exactly right. Mm -hmm. The, how I, shall I call it, vigorous exchanges <laughs> that you had with many of them, mm -hmm. uh, but they all sort of cited that as, as a real positive. They really appreciated having that, that really candid discussions with you. And then the number of people who use the word friend, uh, both uh, with your colleagues and the event other night, I mean, person after person said that, and I think that just says it all about who you are uh, and uh, in your role, but as a person too. And your passion for, for your work, is, this is not a job for you. I can tell this is your passion. This is what you love to do. I can remember calling him once. I didn't know where. He was on vacation. It was like a Friday night. He called me back at like 8 o'clock on Friday night. Mike, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. He's on vacation. So I hope you're better at retirement than you are at vacation. Uh, <laughs> I'm retired right, right now. You well. I'm still in a suit. So. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you well, uh, you and your family, and uh, uh, appreciate our friendship as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let me Thank just you. say that... Um, Supervisor Parks mentioned the idea, you know, being involved in the political stuff in regards Mike is not political at all, and he says, I never want to be political. But we went to Sacramento and dealing with some of this courthouse stuff, and 
you know, people know that he was chief of staff for Alton Galbi on the Republican side, but we go up and deal with some of the other d Democrats, very staunch, complete opposite, very strong relationship with all those people because they understand. It was interesting sitting in that office, you know, we had the governor's office, the family, and just saying, we just here for a purpose. And I think that's going back to what Supervisor Bennett said, people trust you. Mike, we know you're here for a purpose, and a purpose is what's good for this county, and that's what we saw up there. And I, I think that uh, I know you're going to continue to work with us and work with the courts here and, and everybody in the sheriff to try to fight for this issue to, that we believe it's right for the citizens, the citizens that live up here, the citizens of East County. But it just goes back to show, uh, I think as these other supervisors said and, and Mr. Powers said, that you're a friend of those people in Sacramento. It doesn't matter where they come politically because they all, in their heart, all come from different ways, but all have the belief we want to do what's right for the people. And I think that that was shown as we went up there and spent some time. But uh, Mike, uh, I, I appreciate the opportunity to get to know you as a friend and I know we're going to continue to, to work together. And I know each one of these supervisors who need anything, you'd always be there because Absolutely. you care about this Absolutely. county. So, uh, Thank you, and I appreciate the you know, sheriff and the rest of the people who came out to say uh, goodbye, but not really goodbye. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all very much. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have another, what, 11-minute break before? <laughs> oh, you want to do some closed session?
<laughs> and we have an announcement to make, uh, Leroy. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. There's one announcement to make in closed session in a litigation case involving United Rentals Northwest, Inc. versus Tal Cal Engineering et al. It's Ventura County Superior Court case number 56 2011 And in that case, the uh, there has been a final settlement that was approved by the board, and the substance of the settlement is the county will release $18,634.62 to the State Division of Labor Standards Enforcement in exchange for a release of all claims from the other parties. Um, and that, that involved the county is just holding that sum as a stakeholder in a stop loss case involving a dispute between a prime and a subcontractor. It does not involve any liability of the county to, to any employees, but the money will go to the State Division of Labor Enforcement to, uh, for distribution to employees of contractors. Uh, the board approved the settlement on a vote of four to zero. That's all. Thank you, Leroy. Okay, now we're going to continue with item um, 32, and we like, I'd like to call Mark Burrell up to podium. And this is to uh, a resolution from the Board of Supervisors, County of Ventura, proclaiming July 15 and 21st, 2012 as Probation, Parole, and Community Supervision Week, whereas the week of July 15 to 21st, uh, 2012 will be observed nationally as Probation, Parole, and Community Supervision Week as a time to reflect upon significant accomplishments of American invaluable public servants. And whereas this line officers are the heart of the probation, parole, community, uh, supervision uh, profession where they are on the streets supervising offenders day and night working to ensure a safe community and to provide offenders with the opportunities to become law-abiding productive citizens and whereas the Ventura County juvenile probation officers and correction officers handle 4,700 out of, out of custody citations a year supervise 1,900 juveniles in our communities and 150 in institutions Whereas in Ventura County, our adult probation officers supervise over 14,500 offenders, many for, for serious and violent offenses, and manage adult post-sentence jail alternatives programs, easing the crowded jail system and maintaining a community safety. And where our probation, parole, and community supervision officers are not only overseeing their, their uh, charges, they also work diligently using evidence-based practices to rehab the offenders. Support and protect the victims, oversee reparation of harm done to the community and to the victims, conduct home visits, and use GPS electronic mon monitoring, supervise resistant offenders, administer drug tests, make arrests and violations for probation on a 24-7 basis. Whereas our correction service officers provide 24-hour supervision to adult and juvenile offenders in our custody facilities. They also plan, organize, direct a variety of activities. They also felicitate a multitude of programming to address the offender's needs such as aggression replacement, therapy at your juvenile facilities. They collaborate with many community-based organizations, volunteers who bring specific programs to meet offenders' needs while in custody. They assist adult offenders, work for a low in preparing for employment by teaching job readiness programs, providing mock interviews and resume writing, and they also maintain a safety and security of the security of the facilities and the offenders. Whereas our probation, parole, and community supervision officers not only serve other tough uh, through their profession, but they also work with volunteer countless hours to victim groups, with victim groups, local charities, faith groups, youth organizations and associations, literacy programs, and finding a great need and impact of such work that can make the lives of those under the supervision in the communities which they live in. Therefore, let it be resolved that the Board of Supervisors of the County of Ventura hereby proclaim the week of July 15th to the 21st as Probation, Parole, and Community Supervision Week in the County of Ventura, and we express our appreciation and gratitude for the dedication and commitment of the County's Probation, Parole, and Community Supervision Officers, who must become experts in dynamics of drug abuse, sex offenses, child abuse, domestic violence, mental health, field officer safety, and all while maintaining a sense of fairness, compassion, and professionalism in a variety of a very demanding occupation as is presented on the 17th day of July. I'm tired already reading this. <laughs> My goodness. And that's and all true. Down. Thank you. <laughs> Let's come down for a second. Go ahead, Mark.
Wow. Yeah, that sums it all up. Well, Supervisor Zaragoza, and members of the, of, the, of the board, Mr. Powers, thank you for the opportunity to come up here and, and receive this, this resolution. Uh, it means a lot to us. Once a year we come up here and, and uh, we, we do this, and, and it means a lot to our staff to get the recognition of all their hard work. We couldn't do all this without the support of the board, without the support of the CEO's office, and without the support of the court. Um, we, we're successful because of, because of that ongoing support. So first of all, I wanted to tell you how much I appreciate that. I was thinking yesterday as I was uh, preparing for, for some comments, you know, I've spent half of my, over half of my life as a probation officer for this agency and for this county. It's amazing how, how fast time goes. And I remember getting into the profession because I had this incredible appetite to, to serve and I had the, the, uh, the desire to want to work with the challenging population and get them back on the right path. Well, the reality is that I'm just one of uh, a few hundred employees of this agency who believes the same exact thing. They get up every single day and they work incredibly hard with a very challenging population, uh, oftentimes on, in evenings and on weekends and away from their family. Um, but it's really important that, that you understand that what drives us is really the thought that we come in contact with people during crisis times in their life. And we have a window of opportunity that we can make a, uh, make a difference. And I think people very much believe that within our organization and work really hard to, to make that difference. It's no doubt that uh, the face of probation and corrections is changing throughout the state. Uh, we have, uh, the probation agency has been the leader in, in reform of our ju local juvenile justice system now for about 10 years. And we're looking to do the same in our adult system. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge and we are nine months into it, but we've had some some pretty good outcomes and, and people are working really hard to make this, uh, this challenge uh, successful here in Ventura County. Um, again, very honored to be up here to receive this on behalf of the men and women of the probation agency and also just very proud to, uh, to be the chief probation officer of Ventura County. So thank you. Thank you so much. What do we have? Let's have the whole gang come in. Absolutely. Let's go. Come on, gang. Come on. You know, uh, Chief Farrell, I just want to make a quick comment to, to you and your, your staff. And I think you could hear it in the, uh, the resolution that was, uh, that was read, is the balance between enforcement and, and the social service and the medical service uh, work that you do. It's really uh, amazing. You're looking at the root cause of what's happening. So you break that cycle so people don't end up back in incarceration. And I think that's a real reason, one of the main reasons why this safety realignment is not wood, working as well as it is because you have that community-based model that looks at the root causes, and it's extraordinary. So congratulations to you and your whole staff. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, thank you so much. You know, it's really, I read that last night and it took me two hours to read it. But <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for the good work you do. Thank you. 24-7. Thank you again thank for you. the support. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for your good work, too. Um, great mm -hmm. success with the youth, and now seeing it with the adults, too. So it's good work. Okay, our next item is uh, we have a resolution for Parks and Rec, and we, Ron Van Dyke, where's Ron? We, uh, you know, we had Melissa come over from uh, McGrath Park this morning to give us a, a moment of inspiration regarding parks. So I'd like to read this for the, uh, for Parks. This is a resolution from the Board of Supervisors proclaiming July 2012 as Parks and Recreation Month, whereas the Parks and Recreation profession in California creates community through people parks and programs, and whereas we recognize that our county parks are critical to the quality of life enjoyed by residents who enjoy the exceptional recreation and outdoor experience they offer. 
whereas our county parks help to preserve and protect the natural resources of our county, and where parks and recreation support more productive workforces, enhances the desirability of locations of businesses and also families, and to stimulate tourism revenues and to increase the total community development and model. And whereas parks and recreation promote health and wellness and reduces health care costs, and whereas parks and recreation foster human development, help young people develop and grow into healthy adults and help adults to live longer and healthier lives, where parks and recreation support safety and security and reduces juvenile crime in our county, and whereas thousands of children and adults and seniors annually visit our Ventura County Parks facilities and benefit from the wide range of services and facilities, whereas the County Parks Department provides valuable service to the public in planning, development, maintenance, management, and operations at 26 recreation facilities as an enterprise-funded department. Now, therefore, let it be resolved that the board, County Board of Supervisors expresses the appreciation of the Parks Department and urges all the residents to enjoy and recognize the social, physical, mental, economic, environmental, and community benefits derived from our county parks. Campgrounds, picnic facilities, golf courses, multi-use trails, ball fields, community centers, and proclaims July as Parks and Recreation Month. This is presented on the 17th day of July, 2012. Go ahead. Go down. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Mr. Powers, uh, Paul Grossgold from the General Services Agency. Before Ron gets uh, to the mic, I just wanted to say just a couple of words. Your board is well aware that with a very small staff and budget, this department takes care of an amazing number of properties out there spread all over our county. And I, Ron, I think, has been here almost six years or about six years, and in that time, the material condition and appearance of our parks has improved exponentially. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and embarrass Ron. And uh, there's no, let there be no doubt that the, those improvements are a direct reflection of his leadership and focus and, of course, the passion of his staff, which you see assembled around us, not because they're out doing the job. This is our peak season. Uh, and without stealing much more of Ron's thunder, I just wanted to turn it over to him. But uh, I wanted to acknowledge that publicly because uh, the Parks Department is very often uh, in the background, and I, I certainly appreciate the board recognizing the Parks Department today. Uh, I'll keep it short, but uh, thanks, Paul, for the recognition. But it really isn't mine. It's my staff. Um, I've got a very uh, dedicated group of folks that uh, – walk a thin line between exploding and staying balanced. Uh, they got a huge workload, and they do it with pride and professionalism every day. Uh, that's what they're doing right now. Some of our accomplishments, though, that they've uh, managed to do here recently is we put in a $1.8 million bridge. Uh, we are going to recognize the planner for that uh, here shortly, but uh, Teresa Lubin did a great job with that bridge project. Uh, brought it in under budget, under schedule uh, to get it done, uh, which is a significant uh, management skill that she has. Uh, what really blows my mind about the whole thing is she did not give up getting grants. When we, I heard people talking about grant writers today with Watershed. Uh, she was very aggressive getting grants. We've actually lost a million dollars, over a million dollars in grants were denied. Uh, and we were still able to secure enough money to build the bridge, less $200,000, which was uh, significant for this size of a project. Santa Rosa is almost there, Supervisor Parks. We, we had a few hurdles that uh, got in our way, unfortunately, that we had no control over, that being watershed again, and, and FEMA changing the floodplain maps created a huge issue for us, but we're almost there. Right? We can see light at the end of the tunnel finally. Uh, a positive thing, as Paul pointed out, we've uh, increased our revenue from last year to this year in our usage by 6%. Uh, it's a huge increase. It's been relatively flat over the last few years, but this particular year it jumped up 6%. Uh, significant uh, jump. Uh, I was really surprised when I crunched the numbers here the last couple of weeks ago, and, and I just hope we can keep that trend. Can you uh, tell us, how's golf course revenue? Golf course revenue is up, uh, uh, we're, especially at Seoul. Our new manager at Seoul has been bringing in a lot of uh, tournaments. He's, a, he's a great with doing that, so our revenues have creeped up uh, out at Seoul from 
being relatively flat. So the golf courses are, are holding their own. So we're, we're doing good. Yeah, yeah, we're doing really well there. Uh, we talked about staff. Here, here's a, a sound bite of, I think, pretty significance uh, in the big scheme of things. In 1998, the park's budget was just a tad bit over $3 million. It currently is just a tad bit over $3 million, 14 years later. So we are literally running on a flat budget for the last 14 years. We have not increased uh, our properties have stayed the same because people say, well, you lost a lot of properties. Our, we've gained some and we've lost some, so our property numbers are pretty much flat also. And we've done that all with a very flat staff. Uh, so uh, some significant things. And it's all contributed to our staff. Uh, a darn fast-growing fast big, big government, right? <laughs> I mean, that's an Why can't we get the state to do this? <laughs> Can you go to Sacramento? Yeah. So, uh, it's, again, it's all attributed to the staff and, and this proclamation's uh, for them, not, not me. It's my staff that does this day in and day out. Thank you. I don't know what happened to my photographer, but I can. <laughs> and I want to thank you so much, and we had to get that grant writer to, came out, you know, to write some more grants, you know. So. Thank you so much for your good work and in the parks with that thing. Thank you so much. Ron, Paul, lens yeah. 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 Yeah, Ron I, I do agree. I mean, what you said, Paul, is true. I mean, you go to these parks. When I first came here, went around the whole county. They're looking great. I mean, you really are doing a great job with, you know, minimal, where everybody else is, you're seeing their parks suffer on, but you've done it. And I've heard compliments about that, especially your beach stuff and everything else. It's, it's great. So thanks for what you're doing. Paul and Ron, just to echo what uh, Supervisor Foy said, and they've been taking me around to all the different sites too. I'm not quite finished yet, yeah. but it's an amazing number of parks and facilities at every corner of our county, and they are in great shape, and I know that's not easy to do. They're, they're big, and they require a lot of attention, yeah. and they're getting it, and it's a great reflection on our yeah. community and the work that you're doing in your and team. And then it goes back, you know, when you go to a tough economy where people can't do some other things, so they go to the park, they enjoy it, and, mm -hmm. and they get to see the benefit of what you're doing. And I mean, that, that's, as Supervisor Bennett just said, that's, that's tremendous that you're on that flat of a budget. You still had to pay salaries. You still had to do everything, and you're able to provide. So thanks for that hard work. And it just goes back to show that there's people in this county who work here doing the right work for the, for the citizens. I mean, parks are for, are for the citizens. It doesn't change anything for us, but it does for citizens. So thanks very much. And that, uh, that Ojai bike path uh, has, has always been a jewel of Ventura County, but now with that bridge, it's literally changed the experience. Um, for for people um, and in a very significant way, tons of, of comments and compliments about it. And you guys really kept hanging in there and pushing and pushing. So, congratulations! Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Paul and Ron. Thank you so much. Okay, our next item is item 34. This is the our investment report. Now, can't we get our investment guys to do something <laughs> with nothing like a <laughs> any money? <laughs> Chairman Zaragoza, members of the board, Mr. Powers, I'm uh, heartened at the crowd of people pouring into the meeting room to hear my report, <laughs> as usual, because they know the value of true entertainment. Uh, I'm honored to be able to present the report for May on the county's investment pool. And it's similar to the previous report, and I assure you it will be similar to next month's report. The interest rate market and all of our investments are in uh, fixed rate investments. Maintains no change. The Federal Reserve Board suggests that they do not see any likely change in the near future. Mr. Hansen maintains a very short-term position um, so that he can deal with interest rate changes if they should happen. This is a period where the balance of the fund declines slightly but steadily. 
uh, because of withdrawals by agencies that are using their funds. So uh, the report is, uh, to my way of thinking, unremarkable. A solid report considering the benchmarks that exist, uh, but not something that's going to generate a lot of extra money for the uh, county's purposes. We have been treated recently to some very negative forecasts for the future of the investment markets. And um, uh, to my, I, I uh, am happy that my office is dealing with the fixed income end, frankly, to avoid the issues that may be coming up in the broader investment market. Mr. Hansen, I believe that this week he is off the coast of Alaska somewhere. Uh, not, I don't think so. I think that Mrs. Hansen has other ideas for him during this cruise, but. <clears throat> I, would, I would say that uh, looking at this report at making 0.62 of percent, a little over half percent, and we are so constrained in what we can do in short term, the people at CalPERS could take some advice on how this happens. They only made 1 percent with all the abilities they have. Mr. Hansen does not. Uh, use the state's LAIF local agency investment fund as a benchmark, uh, but he knows because of the chart that's on his wall that he beats it every month by 50 percent. <laughs> with and, still the highest, uh, safest rating. And with, the high, uh, with far less risk than they assume, uh, state's LAIF, we've looked at it and we regard their investments is having a significantly higher risk than ours do, <clears throat> although since they do not submit themselves to any of the rating services, who really knows? Hmm? Right. Mr. Hansen and I had the, uh, I don't know if you called a pleasure yesterday at the retirement board hearing some of this forecast news of some pretty dire uh, opinions in the next year's economy in regards to investments and I think mm -hmm. it was more than more people than ever are more negative than they've ever seen or something on what the next which isn't good and we also heard that we only made 1.3 percent in mm -hmm. our numbers right we're thinking uh, yes in terms of what's been reported so far it's about 1.3 which and we expect it may go to 1.5 when the uh, two or three of the sector managers that haven't reported yet do. That is better than CalSTRS and CalPERS, which mm -hmm. is faint praise. But um, a, it doesn't. it's a challenging market yeah. it doesn't overall. Yeah. Well, thank you. for Any, any questions? The, well, thank you. Thank you. Do we need a motion for that? Or? Yeah. Okay. I saw the one million we made here. It used to be when I first came here, making seven, eight, nine million in this one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's it's tough. I mean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay, that's approved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll see you again in two weeks, actually. <laughs> okay, I item 35, this is a student file uh, public works report in the five-year capital. Jeff? Good morning, Chair Zaragoza, board members, morning. Mr. Powers. Uh, for the record, Jeff Pratt with the Public Works Agency. I'm here today to uh, present you with the, this year's version of the county's five-year capital improvement plan. Um, You'll recall that there is a state law that requires that we submit our capital improvement plan, overall county capital improvement plan, to the cities and uh, others for uh, conformance with their general plans, a review for that conformance. Uh, we've done so, and now we're back to see you. Um, we did get some comments from the county planning division, which are included in your packet, but I thought I'd just briefly touch on them here. Um, the level of detail that they're requesting at, uh, is, in our opinion, inappropriate at this level. Um, uh, those, uh, for example, ensuring that the projects comply with biological uh, constraints will happen as the projects proceed for through the CEQA NEPA process and through um, our county planning review. Um, 
Was there a request really to do it prior as opposed to after? No, it, it just it, it just um, it was more of a just make sure this happens and mm -hmm. and okay. in it case there were any concern, we wanted to make sure. It wasn't based on a timing issue. No. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, and then, a, as you may know, in the Waterworks District, capital improvements happen as development happens. And so uh, some of the projects in here, um, we don't know whether they will happen or not, which gets me to the point on this particular comment. Um, we have insufficient information, like Sherwood, where the county planning division made a comment. Um, so it will be defined if and when development occurs, and it's not likely that that development's going to occur anytime soon. Um, uh, we did get responses from five of the cities. Um, we did not from five of the other cities. And um, given some of the turnover in public works staff, with uh, that's, uh, that's not surprising. The three of those cities have uh, either no public works staff or they have uh, public works staff in transition. Um, and uh, I'd like to remind you that all of these projects you've seen in one incarnation or other in presentations to you when we've talked about prioritizing things and so forth over the course of uh, several months and over actually the whole year or so. Um, with that, I'm accompanied by a number of staff members of Public Works and Paul Dursey from the CEO's office, and we'd be happy to answer any questions you have on the uh, CIP. Do we have any questions, uh, Mr. Pratt, or any of the staff members? Okay, seeing none, what's, a, what's the pleasure of the board? At a first and a, and a second. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to add from Mr. Pratt while he's while he's leaving, um, there's been a significant improvement in the whole capital capital improvement project process over over the long term. It's just nice to see this coming together. So that I mean, this is sort of the the, the end result of that, and it's a much more logical process and stuff. So nice Thank job. You Thank, you. Thank you, Jeff. Okay, so um, we have 11 o'clock, so we're going to a closed session, and we'll be back for the 11 o'clock. Thank you.
Okay, we are going to reconvene our Board of Supervisors meeting, item 36. And this is second public hearing, adoption ordinance, uh, Division 6, Chapter 9. Go ahead, Pratt. <laughs> Good morning. Chairs, there goes the board members. Mr. Mm -hmm. Powers, for the record, Jeff Pratt with the Public Works Agency. I have a brief presentation for you. And we did receive some late comments late last week, which we respond to um, uh, as of yesterday evening. And I'm providing some copies to the clerk of the board. Um, sorry. As you recall, um, the ordinance modification is a requirement of the new permit, which was issued in 2008. The reason that the ordinance modification is coming to you at this late date is there were a number of tasks that had to be completed uh, per the permit before the ordinance could be completed. Uh, probably the most significant among those was the technical guidance manual dealing with low impact development, which has um, been completed and adopted. Um, you'll recall that we brought this to you, or we had a stakeholder workshop we, that we talked to you in our first meeting about on, in March, and then we um, left the comment period open for all the attendees for a month. After all that, we received two comment letters, which we presented to you in our previous meetings and uh, responded to. Uh, the first reading occurred on June the 12th. At that meeting, your board gave us some direction, particularly as related to land development. Um, those comments were incorporated. Um, we received additional comments from Colab uh, on, six, on June 22nd. Um, which necessitated moving uh, the second hearing to this second hearing. Those comments were addressed, uh, and I believe to collab satisfaction. I believe Lynn Jensen, uh, Lynn Jensen was going to be here to speak to that, but um, 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 and so um, we're here with you at what would amount to be the, the second uh, reading for adoption. Now, uh, Lynn provided a couple of comments which you have in front of you. Um, which, from a staff perspective, we feel, I, well, let me, I think what motivates those is Lynn's feeling that um, when staff uh, gets an ordinance and, and does their own interpretation, sometimes they interpret it beyond what your board has intended. Our feeling of the suggested changes there, that they, they're sort of circular in nature. They define development with development. And your board has clarified those sections. Um, uh, in this, you see the blue lines um, that have the changes. Attached, you see Lynn's comments. So we feel that um, those uh, comments have already been taken care of, and that's um, evidenced by the email response that we sent yesterday, which is the cover to the packet that you have. Mm -hmm. So with that, I would um, ask your board um, mm -hmm. to, uh, or staff would recommend that your board adopt this ordinance as it is currently amended Thank for you, your June 12th direction. <clears throat> Do I open the public hearing again to refer to? Yes, sir. Okay, let me open the public hearing, and I have uh, before any uh, a Nathan Boren. Good afternoon, good members afternoon. of the board. Um, well, good morning. This is uh, the first time I've uh, looked at this thing, so I, I don't know what's going on before this. Um, my concern is. I don't know how much it would affect somebody like me who has property way far away from any uh, county. I, I don't even know if it's only flood control or any type of channels. Um, there's some small runoff ravines that go through my property that eventually go into Carlisle Creek, which eventually dumps into Lake Sherwood, which eventually goes over Sherwood Dam, which I think goes into a, a channel that's Part of it is lined, some of it's not. I don't know if that passes Westlake or dumps into Westlake and then goes into Triumphal Creek, in which at, by that time it's already in L.A. County. Would any of these affect me uh, if I was doing any type of grading mm. or anything or, or even clearing brush? That's what I'm really afraid mm. of. <laughs> Uh, that's a very broad question. Um, I, for Mr. Bourne's benefit, uh, this is for the unincorporated county program. And I can answer these, and uh, I'll answer Mr. Bourne's question in very broad terms. And then if we need very specific stuff about a specific activity, I'm joined by Evelina Mukowska, who is the unincorporated program manager for the county who in the Watershed Protection District. Generally, if you're grading, there will be some sort of uh, permit required, and it will require that you install best management practices as related to the things that might come off your site during grading. So if you're on a steep slope, 
you've got issues. If uh, you've got runoff leaving your site, you've got issues. And, and essentially, it just requires that you keep your own silt on your own site. That's essentially what this gets at. So, if you're just so, clearing brush, that's not a water quality okay. issue. Uh, now, what Mr. Boren has suggested, that he has streams and creeks, there are overlapping um, regulations that, that aren't all ours, that, you know, fishing games, the Corps of Engineers, mm -hmm. et cetera, that, that can be confusing at times. Um, all of them, I, 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 I have to comply with the EPA guidance and water quality requirements, um, um, but this ordinance is specific to land development activities within the unincorporated county. So, so that's a general answer. So, Nathan, are you in the city or, or in the county? I'm unincorporated. Unincorporated. Uh, along, uh, the of the Lake so then you have to follow the, uh, the rules that you were talking right. about then. Sir. And so if, there, if you have specific activities, uh, um, I have um, Did the you get together with, with me. Evelina, mm -hmm. did that? Well, yeah, specifically I want to see... Uh, Get, come up to the mic. Basically, uh, if I was doing any type of... Uh, if I ever get to a point where I'm doing any type of grading, and, of course, there wouldn't be any runoff if there wasn't any rain, um, you know, uh, obviously things have to be uh, properly uh, stored in... Uh, either uh, mounds or it has to be dispersed and compacted eventually. But again, I just have some con two ravines that go through my property and they don't even meet up with Carlisle. Uh, the runoff through that goes through ser several other properties before it even gets to Carlisle Creek, which I'm not sure if they're a blue or a red uh, line stream, but m the tributaries on my property are not either. Sure, and sure. in the past, I think they were only concerned with red and blue line streams. Mr. Boren, what, um, you can get together with staff, you know, and, and I'm sure they can help you out, you know, with the. Right, but if this is adopted, the, it's, I guess it's, that it's, I think, as Mr. Pratt mentioned, you know, this is, we're following, you know, the mandated guidelines and so forth. Right, Jeff, you know, and the. So. But are they mandated to include any tributaries? Because basically you can even call, I mean, anything on a property eventually will get into a stream somewhere. You're right. And um, it, this is, I, you may be confusing the red and blue line stuff. The, the red line channels are adopted by your board, mm -hmm. by ordinance. They're the big streams where if somebody monkeys with them, they have the real potential to, to damage their neighbors. So your board, and many years ago, has adopted procedures for monkeying with red line streams. It had nothing to do with it this water quality okay. ordinance. The blue line streams are shown on USGS maps, and that's where you got to worry more about fish and game and the Corps of Engineers, and they assert jurisdiction in, in places that, um, that can sometimes be surprising. But I, that's completely different than um, the, the grading ordinance. Okay. And, um, or excuse me, the water quality ordinance, right? So the um, um, water quality concerns have to do with dumping stuff into those things, not messing around inside of them. So. I okay, hope, so and I'd be happy to meet with you. He can get together with, a, with the Jeff then, uh, Mr. Born. Thank you. This is a public hearing. I have no other uh, speaker cards. Oh, thank you. Len, you're up. Okay, mm. sorry about that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I actually wanted to um, submit this. Is this a copy of what we have? No. I doubt. <clears throat> Sorry? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. Hopefully you do have the email. Sorry about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I would like to thank uh, Evelina with, with the Watershed Protection District for all her communications during the comment period. And I also appreciate the ability to make revisions and clarifications in the document that were accepted at the last hearing on June 26th. Um, however, Ventura County Colab is still concerned with the application of stormwater ordinance where it's with respect to agriculture. 
And I just want to read what Evelina wrote in her email. I think you guys have seen that. What she says is, as defined by the permit, the construction activity is re construction related activity and for the purpose of construction. Clearing for ag purposes is not subject to the Ventura Municipal Permit. Agricultural activities are covered under a separate regulatory mechanism, which is the Ag Conditional Waiver. That waiver covers um, irrigated lands, actually. It doesn't apply to all the agriculture in the county. So I think that's important to, po to point out. Um, and uh, that's regulated by the Regional Water Board, and therefore it's exempt from the Municipal Stormwater Permit. Clearing for the fire protection purpose is not involving soil disturbance, is considered routine maintenance. Please note that routine maintenance is not considered construction. Please refer to definition D, construction activity. Okay, and so then her second email to me, which actually uh, came in at 4 o'clock yesterday, at 424 yesterday, said, in summary, the municipal stormwater permit does not regulate clearing activities for ag and fire purposes, and considering the above, we are unable to accept your proposed revisions to the stormwater ordinance. And then later, a later email said, under the state construction permit and, munis and municipal stormwater permits, clearing for ag purposes is not subject to construction regulations. And that was at 5.30 last night. Um, what we're concerned about is that the construction section needs to be clear about it's not applying to clearing for fire or agricultural purposes. And that projects that have no construction purpose should not be subject to this section in the Ventura County Ordinance. The way um, the definition D reads, construction activity shall mean any construction or demolition, comma, clearing, grading, grubbing, or excavation for any other activity that results in a land disturbance. That's the way it reads now. The concern is, and, and what we'd like to do is add the word including, because the, the construction or demolition activity includes these clearing, grading, grubbing, or excavation that results in a land disturbance for the purpose of construction, not for the purpose of agriculture, not for other purposes. That will make it clear in the future, 10 years from now, when people look at this, I think it will be confusing because you could, you could um, by looking at this definition, include clearing, grading, grubbing, or excavation for any purposes, including fire clearance. And these things do seem to change over time. So you're saying to include this red? Uh, right. And I think that makes it more clear that this is construction for the purpose of construction. And I know that you're looking at me saying, well, of course it is, but we've seen these ordinances change. We've seen people reinterpret them five years, looking at this ordinance and saying, oh, wait a minute. It says clearing, grading, grubbing. It doesn't say that that's necessarily for construction. And so obviously, if you're going to build a building, mm -hmm. any of that would apply. I just would like to ask Mr. Pratt to come up because he mm. addressed this concern before you got here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I, right. think, I think you'll find. Mm -hmm. um, sure. The, that's a, under the definition for construction activity, as I recall. So it, it's clear that it's construction related. Um, ag is covered in a number of places. Uh, there's the condition of the waiver, which does apply to irrigated lands. There's also the grading ordinance, which uh, speaks to it. Now, ag will not have to come in for a grading permit. Um, and so uh, if they apply the BMPs that are going to be in the grading ordinance. Now, that grading ordinance hasn't been presented to your board yet, but we have worked through a serious set of stakeholders, including CoLab, on the language, and that's the language that will be presented to your board. So it's, uh, excuse me, am I going too far? No, and, and you've already, in, you've included the for the purposes of construction. Mm -hmm. um, let me make sure, is, is that new. right? I don't think we did because that was circular. It was construction for the purposes of construction. So we could do that. Is this including does, for the purposes? Does it hurt, Jeff, to add these at all? Uh, no. What it does is it moves this to another reading. And um, and so it it seems that we keep picking away. At it. So, uh, so at some point, um, it so, seems as though so we. So it moves, moves us to another 30 days? Just, just, uh, another not just another board, uh, just the another second board, reading. Another board, so we'll second have to. Reading. Uh, you know, I, 
clearly you have stipulated specifically where it applies to in excavation and in, in grubbing and grading. I mean, it's already detailed out there. And then to qualify it, those issues only if they're for construction. You know, to me, that's uh, not not what the intent is. It's the intent is the activities like excavation, not what the basis the for the excavation is. That's regardless. It's the actual. Um, action of excavating that should call this forward. So I think, as you had mentioned, you have clearly stated what, where it is applicable, and I, I, I don't have a problem with the way you've written it. I should state, just to, to be perfectly clear with everyone, that if we were to stumble on a situation where there's a clear water quality violation, we're not driving by just because it's on an ag land or something. I mean, now, the, the, the way the grading permit reads is that um, you should have BMPs in place. So what I just told you presumes that those BMPs would not have been in place because something's happening that shouldn't be happening. So um, you're, you're right in that sense, um, Supervisor Parks, that um, there can be cases where um, water quality uh, uh, ordinance is being violated um, that, that fall outside of any just construction activity. Okay, uh, this is a public hearing. I, I this have is no the second reading of the ordinance, yeah. correct? Yeah, go ahead. Um, while we agree in agriculture that we want to comply with the stormwater regulations, and there's no argument about the BMPs, we expect the BMPs to be in the grading permit, but this is a separate process in terms of this stormwater permit and whether you are under that stormwater permit. And the whole purpose of the non-development grading negotiations that we've been doing up to this point is to have those things, the BMPs, all incorporated into the grading permit itself and not have to go through any kind of a separate process or not qualify under the state construction permit, which is um, just a lot more paperwork and a lot more cost in our mind. So that, that, that's the purpose of just making sure that this is for construction. We're not saying that the people out there in agriculture want to be able to do whatever they want under whatever waivers. But we'd like it to be under the, the county's grading permit and whatever else we put in that non-development permit and not trigger the state permit. Yeah. Thank you. Is, uh, any, I don't have any other public speakers. Anybody else like to speak on this uh, hearing? If not, then I'm going to close the public hearing. And supervisors? Yeah, I just I did want to note I, I'm it was good to see that Colab has been uh, got their input in and, and has made some changes to this which we did at the last the reading beginning. of this ordinance and I'm glad that we were able to take that input and I appreciate your continual input um, and uh, as staff has put it together I think we have a sufficient and better ordinance as a result of having to meet the water quality board's new requirements so I'll go ahead and move the motion to uh, adopt the second reading. I, I, I don't I know, Jeff. I just it's, it sounds like this clarification because it sounds like it's easy to put this in here without because I agree. There's a lot of times that later on what you intended can be changed by saying you know something. So we I, I don't know why we couldn't include this. I mean, the idea that you talk about grubbing and we're talking about construction. It was very clear about construction. We're not talking because under this term we could say well. You're doing some work here. We're not sure. No, we're just saying I'm doing farming work. I'm doing my ranching work, and it doesn't fall under this permit. So I don't know why we just can't include this. It's very simple. We're not changing a whole lot. We're not changing anything. Just clarify. Could you give a staff's response in terms of why you decided not to include it? Because you were obviously asked. We got it at the 23rd hour, and it would have required moving this to another hearing. We felt that it was clear enough, and that it might inclusion might include some confusion, create some confusion of its own, that's in right. that it's a circular argument or that's, circular definition. That's that's that's, okay. Okay. that's the other thing that I wrote. Right, okay, but what would that confusion be? Uh, well, you're defining construction by construction. So uh, the, the situation I described is um, uh, we will, if there is a water quality violation, whether it's an ag or if, I, if they're clearing brush and throwing it into the creek, there will be a visit, um, and that needs to be clear. Um, and in other words, that's a water quality violation. Cut it, uh, where clearing wouldn't be a water quality violation, throwing the brush in the ditch would be. Um, or, excuse me, that would be a stream or a creek. Uh, um, but um, but it, there are times where um, we will be enforcing provisions of this ordinance where it doesn't apply strictly to a land development activity as defined in here. So the more stringent we are about making it only land development, the more we're maybe 
going to confuse ourselves and close our eyes to some of the other violations, which the regional board would hold us to, I, I mean, hold us in fine for I, if we weren't if enforcing you talk it. About construction I, 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 think no. we, I think at some point in time, I mean, I think staff has been, as, as Len Jensen said, has been very willing to talk and, 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 and collaborate. At some point in time, we have to, we have to trust staff's you know, making some reasonable interpretations. Well, I, I, I have interpretations. no problem with what they're doing because I think they understand it. But two years, eight years, new people well, in, there's going to, it's. I think, but I think when they offer, there can be confusion the other way also no. with, I with, think with the circular logic. Because I mean, right. you, you, you define construction activity pretty well there. Isn't it? We think we do, and, and uh, we think that it confuses it to add a construction. If you add really more to that, yeah. Because uh, I'm going to uh, yeah. second the motion. Yeah, okay. Okay, go to first and second. Mm -hmm. I want to say to Ms. Jensen, I, I appreciate I think there's been okay, real good faith effort approved. on both, both, both sides, and I think that there um, have been, been significant improvements as a result of that. So um, that's our last item, so we are adjourned.